Hello, hello. Welcome back to my little farm kitchen here at Nine Little Aussies. I'm Chrissy. Today I'm going to be making some apple crumble. And the reason is often apple crumble is something I will make when there's a special occasion, but there isn't today, no special occasion. I just have apples that need using. And when that happens, I could just make applesauce. I could make apple muffins. Sometimes I make apple porridge, but my favorite way, and I would say my family's favorite way to use up apples that are probably beyond the crunching on for snacks and really need to be cooked, our favorite way is apple crumble. Okay, these are the apples in question and we've been munching on them, but you can see some of them are a little bit try, starting to go leathery and just not as crunchy. So I'm gonna cook them up and what else have we got going on? I've got a few things going on in the kitchen. Just made some of um, Jess's sandwich bread. I haven't tried that recipe before, so I thought I'd try that. Got some beef broth bubbling away, which I must do. I must do that recipe. Someone asked for it, but I haven't got to that yet. And I just wanted to share with you this um, update on the sauerkraut, which I've got in the fridge now, this jar is nearly gone. I've been really enjoying it with my um, eggs in the morning. So it's delicious. I think I left it in the pantry, um, just continuing to uh, burp it, you know, let loosen the lid and let the gases out. I kept it in there for about two weeks, I think, before I decided, nah, that'll do, and popped it in the fridge. Okay, so first step is I'm just gonna peel and chop all the apples into this little pot, put a tiny bit of water in the bottom and pop it on the stove to cook. So I'm just gonna peel and chop. So I was just cleaning my kitchen and tidying up after lunch, getting a few things done. And I was listening to um, Jess from Roots and Refuge on her podcast, she, interviewed Kelly, Kelly Brotherton and she was talking about friendship and friendships forged and I often like to listen to podcasts while I'm pottering in the kitchen. Anyway, it just really got me thinking. She was talking about the importance of friendships, especially for women and you know there are seasons that of really intense mothering, the motherhood that we go through where we can't spend a lot of time you know we have a lot of small people needing us and it can be very demanding but also the need we have as women for those friendships which I can totally relate to I mean I was thinking back it just made it just got me thinking about my own life and the many beautiful women who the Lord has brought along during different seasons. And some of those friendships were just for a season and some of them were lifetime friendships that, you know, the ocean in between us has not, um, has not stopped that friendship. Um, and just how much, how rich life is when you allow women to walk life with you. Um, and I think it takes being vulnerable, but it also takes a deliberate decision. Anyway, I was thinking about that and just how very blessed the, you know, I feel for the, the friendships I've had over the years. Um, even this peeler, it's perfect <laughs> little representation of my beautiful friend Camille, who when she found out I was struggling, I couldn't find a peeler here that I liked. I was taking forever to peel every peeler I tried. I'm like, oh my goodness, the peelers work different over here. I can't find a peeler. So she, when my son went back to Australia for a wedding, she sent two of these back in his suitcase for me. She's so sweet and I love it. It's not even a fancy peeler. It's just a simple one. I think she went to Coles or Woolies and got but I couldn't find one like it here. Not to say there isn't one, I just couldn't find one at the time. But you know, Camille and I had spent hours 
sitting, chatting, watching our children play. We had babies together, walk through hard stuff, um, good times, bad times with each other, you know, doing life together. Just thinking about my beautiful friend Jacinta who taught me how to make sauerkraut and all of our dear beautiful friends who rallied around us when my husband was sick and came over and cleaned my house and um, brought meals and life is so much richer in community there's something about that sense of community and having women around you who walk through the thick and the thin in all seasons of life that just it um it's so strengthening to the human spirit to feel like you're not alone. I will say there have been many, many years where I did not have those kind of friendships. And I think really some of those, the best ones, the deepest levels of friendship didn't happen until I was in my mid thirties at least. Um, I do have some really good friends from when I was younger. Um, close friends from school but I moved away geographically and that just automatically kind of you know we stayed in touch and we're still good friends but you don't do life with people who live a long way off generally speaking um, but I was thinking about that I was thinking about how you know and also some of those friendships that are the the deepest and most meaningful to me were forged through great trial and hardship and being very vulnerable with one another and being open and willing I guess taking that risk of being hurt and those people choosing um, friendship choosing honor choosing grace um, and that there's something about walking through hard things. You know, some one of my very best friends in Australia, her name's Jess, she's just a beautiful soul. Must be the name, but she, no, seriously. She and I have done that. We have walked through really hard things together with our families and with each other. And there, she's generally the first person I think of when I think I need, I need to call someone and have a conversation. I think of Jess because when people have not just been sunshine friends but they've been thunderstorm friends as well there's something very um, strengthening about that you know the Bible talks about iron sharpening iron and um, she's that kind of girl and I really do want to be that kind of friend to people that I, you know, that the Lord brings. It is more blessed to give than receive, and that's definitely true in friendships, I think. Actually, one of the hardest things I found was when my husband got really sick and I had to learn how to receive. That was so hard. That was really tough. I am someone who has really loved to give to others whenever I can, whether it's financially or of my time or a word of encouragement, but I found it very, very difficult to be at a place where I was, uh, <laughs> I was, I wasn't empty but I was strapped like I just was on the run constantly going from the hospital to my house to my children to trying to run the home trying to keep everyone in good spirits um, and trying to be there for my husband at all these tests and treatments he was having and I had to learn to receive meal after meal after meal and receive when my 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 father passed away um, 
a little while after that, but he was very ill during that time as well. So I was also dealing with his illness and having my friends come in and clean my house from top to bottom. It was beautiful, but it was humbling and very hard to not be the one going to clean someone's house, but to be receiving it. Um, there was a big, there was a big lesson there for me, I think, in being okay with that mm -hmm. end of things as well. Mm -hmm. Yes, honey. Oh, I'm putting the apple in the wrong place. <laughs> yes, baby. Anyway, so that's my been my musings as I have listened to Jess and pottering around the kitchen. So I've got this pot. Um, it's only up to here. Often I will have this kind of overflowing, but. This is just how many apples we have on hand and they are going to cook down quite a bit. Um, so I'll pop them in the on the stove top and cook them up. But what I was thinking as well is just, there are different types of friendships for different and different seasons with friendships. You know, I have some beautiful friends who, Heidi and Kate, and we would just get together, hard, not very often at all, Often it was once a year for a coffee around Christmas time. We'd just do a girls night and we'd go out and have um, Italian, uh, what were they called? Italian churros dipped in chocolate sauce um, on the Marucci River. And we'd have, sometimes we'd have dinner and then we'd go get churros um, and just laugh our heads off and talk until late in the night. And once a year, like our lives were very different. Our lives were very busy and we didn't do life together on a day-to-day -day basis, but we had this connection um, from the past and things we had done church together at one point and, um, and that friendship had stayed, but it was just a once a year connection, but it was still really special. So not all friendships are going to be that, um, day in, day out, living life with people. Some of them are, and they're beautiful, important too, but friendship is just such a beautiful, rich thing and so varied. But I do think there's something about them getting deeper and richer as you get older. And when I hit my late thirties and definitely into my early forties, I maybe I'm just more comfortable in my own skin and more comfortable with who I am and what I believe and my family that I don't feel as defensive and therefore a little bit more open and okay with being vulnerable and yeah I don't know but there's definitely a richness that comes with friendships as you mature through life it's a beautiful thing I think okay so I have just put Probably, I would say about the equivalent of a half a cup, maybe a cup of water. It's really, it's really not important. It's to really basically keep it from sticking. Um, and I've turned that on because the apples will juice up and they will cook down and there'll be plenty of liquid. While that apple is cooking, I'm just going to put dinner on, um, which I wasn't going to film this, but I thought, oh, well, I'll just show you what I'm doing for dinner tonight. I have two, um, two dishes of chicken legs, I, which is just what I happen to have in the freezer. And I'm just gonna make um, honey soy chicken legs. And I'll probably do, I think I'll do mashed potatoes with them. And I've got, I'm pretty sure there's cabbage I need to use up. So fried cabbage is probably the combo I will do, which goes pretty nicely. Um, this, my mom used to make honey soy chicken when I was little. Um, I'm not sure if this is exactly how she did it, but this is how I do it. So I just, I'm gonna drizzle soy sauce, a little bit of sesame oil, some honey. And if I had them, I would put sesame seeds, but I don't have any right now. So I'm just gonna skip that and stick them in the oven, a moderate oven until they're cooked.
My kids like it when I do more honey, not less, because it makes it kind of have a sticky sauce. This is definitely one of their favorite dinners. The other thing I didn't mention, which but which I do when I have it, is to add in some minced garlic. So I just put the garlic on top and I've just massaged it all into the meat um, and rolled them in it. And now I'm just gonna pop it in a moderate oven. The apples have just been started boiling and steaming. So I'm just turning it down onto low. I've turned it down and I'll let that continue to cook. But I don't like to overcook them. So probably in five minutes, I'll actually turn it off and just let it finish in its own steam. I've got potatoes. I'll do potatoes with that meal. Now look how much these have cooked down. Whoops, trip, trip. They have cooked down so much, which is why I usually sort of overflow this pan to get enough apples, but that's okay because the apples needed cooking. And what I'll do is I'll just make a smaller batch of apple crumble on this particular occasion. Okay, I'm just gonna combine the dry ingredients for the crumble, which will go on top, and then we bake it in the oven. So it's, it's a super cinchy recipe. Um, so I'm gonna put those in there, mix it in. And I was just remembering as I'm continuing to potter around the kitchen, thinking about friendship. We're often friendships are formed when Yes, like I said, when we go through difficult things together, when we have similar similarities, maybe similar family size or um, they have boys, we have boys, whatever the case may be. But one of our dearest friends in Australia, um, our beautiful friends, Patsy and Marcus. And Patsy is just one of these ladies who I was just always in awe of as to she had they have 12 children and her ability to remain calm cool and collected no matter what is going on always used to inspire me and she had they had children at uh, our family's ages but also older children so i felt like i could go to her for advice a lot and when we when she found when they found out we were moving at that time we lived maybe 10 11 at least 11 hours away and we told them we we're making we're moving overseas and right towards the end when I was packing up and we were doing the last minute mad scramble the house was in a schmuzzle and she she called me and she said I'm coming up I'm going to cook the meals I'm going to put band-aids on the owies I'm going to talk to children and you can do whatever you need to do I'll, I'm going to be there in three days. And she came up and just literally brought peace and order to that chaotic place. And they had made an overseas move before. They had immigrated from Zimbabwe. And I think, you know, when you've been through something like that and you know the enormity of it and the hardness of it and the emotional um, pull and things you're going through as well as all the hundred million physical things you have to think about and she just it didn't matter to her that there was an 11 hour car drive she just got in the car with a couple of her kids and came up and was such a blessing and i think that sort of friendship is rare i'll say that but it is precious and being able to be someone who pours into others like that um, I think that is there's such a depth of richness there in friendship and what we strive to do what I want to be as a friend is that kind of friend like you need me you're 12 hours away no problem I will be there you need me and I'm in the middle of doing something I will put it on hold you know I'm not talking about just for little things but you know when someone is going through something that you can be there for them okay so we've got a cup of brown sugar this is after all a dessert and I have done this over the years I've kind of tweaked this a few times and turned it into like I've done it with honey or maple syrup and that does work as well it's just not quite as caramelly cup of flour I've also done it with um, 
There was a period of time where our family was gluten free and I've done it with almond flour and that works quite well. A cup of oats. And actually when I'm doing a big batch, I will double this, but we have less apples than usual. So this single batch will be fine. And a half a cup of coconut. So at home I'd use desiccated. Here I'm gonna use these coconut flakes, which works just fine as well. So I'm just kind of mixing that in like that. Okay, I'm just gonna melt a couple of sticks of butter in this little cast iron dish. Okay, I'll tuck it back here. The stove's kind of full, but it'll fit back there. It is quite a bit later before I've been able to get this in the oven. So I'm going to pop it in to bake at on a, in a moderate oven. So 350 Fahrenheit, 180 Celsius for about 20 minutes or half an hour until it just goes crunchy and golden. So that's out of the oven. It is hot out of the oven. Now, if you were doing this the real Australian way, you'd have some yummy homemade custard to pour over the top. But alas, I do not have that tonight. We do have some cream. So we'll have the, this served with a little cream. So that's it guys, just a yummy apple crumble. It is now late, I am tired. So we're gonna sit down, put my feet up, drink a cup of tea and eat some apple crumble. Because it's so late. The little kids didn't get any tonight because they were already in bed. So I'll save that for them for tomorrow. I was just wrapping up my thoughts as I sat on the couch, eating my um, apple crumble. And I was thinking further about this whole issue of friendship. And you know, when my husband recovered from cancer, it kind of reset our thinking on a lot of things and reset our priorities. And we decided to sell everything, pack everything up, sell everything, and go on the road in the caravan with all the kids. So we did. We spent about five months or so traveling around Queensland. We would have traveled further, but it was all in lockdown, so we couldn't. Traveling around Queensland and we thought, you know, let's just go create memories. Let's go explore, let's go, do something together as a, as a family that we want to do and that we love. He was too ill after recovering, um, in recovery from all the treatment, um, he couldn't work. So at that point he was on a disability pension, which meant that we could just go and travel. And it really was a beautiful thing. It was, I'm so glad we did it. I'm so glad we did it. It was a God thing, totally. And I love when you, kind of take a risk and do something out of the box like that when when it's right when you feel led to do it um just the places that can lead is amazing and what ended up happening we traveled around we saw some amazing amazing places met some beautiful people had some unforgettable experiences we ended up pulling into this little town called Claremont in central Queensland we planned to be there for three days to stay at the dam and rest up because we'd all been a little bit sick and rest for a little then travel on. We never left and that was one of those divine appointments that we were supposed to be there and the friendships that we formed during the couple of years that we were there really wasn't very long but I love how that when 
like I said, when you go out on a limb and you do something by faith and you know that you're supposed to do it, just how God shows up in those moments. And it was an unforgettable community. And the people we met there were so special. They will forever be carved on our hearts. And I do believe we'll probably always stay in touch with them. Um, the, there was a really, um, just a really strong sense of community. And the little church we're involved with um, and all the people there, they were just instantly family, instantly. And we did life together. We did everything together, went on holidays together. Um, it was just beautiful. It was a beautiful thing. But really, when I look at it, it was short. Like we were there for two years or just about two years. Um, it's not a very long amount of time, but my goodness, was it impactful. It was just what we needed at that time to be um, surrounded and embraced by beautiful people and and people who said here come you're part of us you're with us and a lot of healing happened um, while we were there a lot of good things happened and anyway that's all that's just my story but the point of that and the point of me sharing all these little snippets about friendships that I've had that you know that's that's just me that's just my story and Everyone's got a different story, but I think the commonality is this. When we will walk through life, um, trusting that the Lord knows what we need and that he is a good father, he's faithful and he's kind. Um, he, I have always found that he just brings the right people at the right time. And it's not to say that there, like I said before, there have been times of intense loneliness, times where I haven't had the friendships that I desired. But when I have chosen to, um, well, two things, I suppose, chosen to be that friend anyway, but honest, honestly, the Lord has always sustained me through those times and I've found his presence more than sufficient. I think what I'm trying to share is my experience and perspective that when I have laid back in those everlasting arms and trusted my future and my family to a good, good, good father and just said, Lord, where do you want me to be? Where do you want me to go? And wherever I, and just try and follow wherever that is, whatever that looks like, he knows our needs and he loves us so much and he gives us what we need. Um, and we can trust that we can rest in that. So I don't know. I don't know why I felt like I needed to share that today, but if there is, I hope that's an encouragement to somebody, um, as you walk along this life. All right. Blessings until next time, friends. Bye-bye.